This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from OpenTuition.com. So let's go through now and have a look at the world of debt factoring. So to understand what debt factoring is, we need to go to the, the, the definition that's provided there by SEMA. Uh, debt factoring essentially is going through there and transferring your portfolio of receivables to somebody else, the factor. And what happens there is that the factor gives you the cash for your receivables. Usually the factor will give you less cash than what your receivables are worth. So it may give you 80, 90% of the value of your receivables. But once you've gone through there and transferred your receivables to the factor in return for cash, it is then the factor's responsibility for the collection of the cash. Now, we just need to be careful there. There are two different types of factoring. Uh, one is with recourse. Uh, with recourse is whereby the factor can come back to you and get any uncollected cash back. Okay, So if you've sold them the receivables and you've sold them for an amount of cash, if the factor cannot collect all of that cash back in, you bear the responsibility of collecting in the remaining cash. Okay. Uh, the key bit there is that you therefore bear the risk of any irrecoverable debts. However, the alternative is if you sell the debt without recourse, in that case, the factor cannot come back to you uh, and transfer back any of the remaining debts if they've not collected in the cash. So, therefore, once you've transferred the debts, that's it. There is no longer any risk associated with those debts. So, there is no, if you like, irrecoverable debt risk. So, therefore, no irrecoverable debt expense to consider, is there? Okay. Uh, so, the factor has taken on board the risk. Why do we go through there and go through and take up the debt factoring in the first place? Uh, well, one of the main reasons is that it gets somebody else to do the day-to-day -day management for you. So it can be very useful if you're a new or fledgling business and are trying to focus more your time on the growth of the business as opposed to the administration side of collecting the cash. So we can go through there and approach a factor. And what that should then do is that should then save you internal administration costs. So that is the fundamental advantage. If you're a small business, you can focus on your day-to-day -day running of the business and growing the business by transferring the debts to the factor. You don't need to go through there and manage that part of the business anymore. And that should save you on admin costs because you don't need to employ staff as part of your debt collection process, do you? However, do be aware that factoring the debt does come with a cost. The factor will go through there normally and charge you a fee, which can be a percentage of the overall level of receivables or the overall level of sales. So we need to incorporate that in any computational aspect as we see later on. Do just be aware, as useful as using a factor is, there are also as well some disadvantages that we need to go through there and consider. Uh, could overall be more costly uh, if you are a more developed business uh, because you have a well-run credit collection procedures. So maybe by approaching the fact that that would therefore make it too expensive. Okay. Likewise as well, uh, there's a common perception that if you're using a factor, the reason why you're using a factor is because you are in financial difficulty and cannot collect the cash yourself. So you have sold it on to somebody else. And therefore, some customers may not be prepared to go through there and deal with that factor because uh, it's somebody external to your business. Likewise, as well, once you've gone through there and began to use a factor, it's going to be very difficult then to revert back to your normal credit control. So once you've gone through and factored your receivables, it tends to be that you factor your receivables continually. Okay, uh, And what you're doing as well is by factoring your debts, you can be giving up the opportunity to go through there and set your credit terms and who that credit should therefore be given to. Okay, You can transfer that over to the factor as well. So it leaves you with a little bit less control within the business. Uh, the other alternative to factoring is whereby, you know, factoring is we sell our whole portfolio of debts for an amount of cash. The other one is invoice discounting. 
uh, and that's where you go through and use selected invoices against which you will go through there and borrow funds okay uh, so you borrow the money you use the invoice or specific invoices as security because if you cannot then pay the cash back on the borrowings the, the company will go through there uh, and use those invoices as security and get the cash from your customers instead okay so very very similar to factoring but it's not there with regards to a portfolio of debt it's there security against a specific invoice or specific invoices from a particular customer okay uh from a company or computational perspective uh let's go through there and have a look at the factoring example that we have there within the notes uh, because as we said, factoring is expensive. So we need to work out whether or not the cost of the factoring uh, is sufficient to go through there and be cheaper than borrowing the money separately. So what you've got there is it says, should Coral Limited accept the factors offer? So obviously different questions are going to have different specifics, but the, the same approach is always going to go through there and happen okay so what we need to go through and do there with regards to a question approach uh, first of all what we're going to go through there and consider is you are going to go through there and calculate any interest saving on your receivables because hopefully if you've sent your debts off to a factor they should be able to collect the cash in that bit quicker shouldn't they and therefore you will save on your interest okay so remember to work out the interest saving uh, or to work out the interest you take the interest percentage multiplied by the receivable but if your receivable is reducing we're going to look at the reduction in the receivable and apply that interest cost aren't we then once we've got that we can then go through there and calculate the total saving. So not just the saving on the receivables, but inclusive of any admin savings. Remember that was one of the advantages, but also as well, and including any fee. So any savings that we make will be offset by any fees that we incur. So we need to begin to look at the fees that are incurred to see whether or not that reduces the savings. And if not, then it will not be worth, will it, accepting the offer. So what we've got there, it says Coral Limited currently has turnover of 25 million. Uh, receivable turnover, so receivable days, is currently there at 40 days. So what we could go through and do there is we could work out our current level of receivables, couldn't we? Okay. Uh, interest is charged on the overdraft, is it there at 12%? And the company has offered its service for an annual fee. Is that there of 1% of turnover? So our fees in this example are 1% of your sales, which is there, is it as 25 million okay so is that there as two hundred and fifty thousand dollars and the factoring company can reduce the receivables to 15 days so we could go through there and work out what the receivables would be at 15 days couldn't we and then the fact that also generates admin savings the company is it there fifteen thousand dollars so our admin savings there are fifteen thousand dollars aren't they so we're incurring fees of 250 but we're saving 15 so is that a net cost of 235 the key is always going to be isn't it uh, the interest on the receivables and the interest that is going to be calculated is based upon, is it the 12% and what the change in our receivables levels are. So what we need to go through and look at that is we need to look at our current
level of receivables. We then need to go through there and look at our new level of receivables. Because once we've got that, we can then go through there and look at the reduction in the receivables being the difference between the two and then we can go through there can't we and work out the interest saving the interest saving there is it at 12 percent so to work out the level of receivables what we're going to go through and do remember you've got your formula haven't you uh, in that your receivable days is equal to your receivables over your credit sales multiplied by is it the 365 days isn't it we are looking to work out the receivables so to work out your receivables you need to just go through there don't we and play around with the formula so you have your receivable days if you divide both sides by 365 days uh, the 365 days cancel on the right hand side don't they and they become on the left hand side and then if you multiply both sides by sales the sales cancel out and then you have to multiply there by the sales isn't it okay excellent uh, so what you've got there is you need to take your receivable days uh, divided by 365 uh, and multiply by the sales so our current level of receivables is 40 receivable days over 365. And then we multiply, is it by 25 million? Uh, I think that comes in, uh, is it at 2 million? 739,726. Uh, and the fact that can reduce it to 15 days, so 15 over the 365 multiplied by the, the same 25 million because that's our annual level of sales. And I think that comes, is it, to 1027.397. So our reduction in the receivables. Uh, you can see there, if you work that on your calculator, is 1712329. And if you multiply that by 12%, does that give you 205. 205.479. Okay, that is your interest saving, isn't it? Okay, so what you've got there uh, is to work out the, the total saving So that second step uh, The interest saved Is it there as two hundred and five thousand four hundred and seventy nine? The admin saving, I think, was there, was it, as 15,000. And then the fee that you have, I think, was it 250,000 that we worked out. And what happens here is 29251. We don't actually have a saving we have a cost so it is a cost to the business there is no saving so therefore uh, would you accept the factors offer I wouldn't because it is a little bit too expensive it's more expensive than if we were there without the factoring okay uh, so that's looking at things from a computational aspect there could also be questions on a non computational aspect thinking about the advantages and disadvantages of factoring and also comparing what the differences are between factoring and invoice discounting uh, but once you've done that then there's nothing else that you need to go through there and consider with regards to the world of factoring